Okay. First thing we're gonna do. Work. Okay. There we go. Okay. We're gonna grab our essential equipment for cleaning the floors, and a lot of it is stored here. We're going to need floor stripper, rubber gloves if you'd care to use them, a new mop head to store it in here, and the floor fan. On our way out, we're going to grab the broom, dust mop, floor scrubber, and the squeegee. And that's everything we're going to need to do the work we need to do. So before we begin, we're going to clear the whole kitchen out of everything that is in the way, that's waste baskets, garbage cans, speed racks, anything on wheels, and anything that's sitting on the floor that needs to be out of the way so we can clean the floor. Okay, the first thing we have to do before we squeegee the floors is to get a place for the water to go when we squeegee the floors, and that's into the grease trap. So we have to unscrew these things and loosen them up, and they just go by hand. And then I've got a pry bar and a screwdriver. So I just work the screwdriver into here, wherever I can fit. Let's see how it's go. And the pry bar and two of them together it doesn't take that long. And then just shove that thing under there, and then you've got a place for the water to go. Granted, your hands will get greasy. You have to wash them, but this is the thing we have to do. Clean this area. We've got to move the floor mat out to the front temporarily. So the next thing we need to do is sweep all the floors that are accessible without having to move any prep tables. Okay, after we've swept everything that is available without having to move anything, that's when we move the prep tables apart. Okay, next thing that happens is we take the floor stripper, we put approximately a half cup or so, it's not that critical, into one of the sandy buckets, fill it all the way up, and then we're just going to spread it over the floor, make sure it's distributed evenly, and let it sit for a few minutes. So that's how this stuff cleans. So I got this one filled, and I'm going to go up front. So one of the important things that we didn't talk about with equipment is always wear your non-skid shoes <laughs> when you're when you're doing this because this is going to be slippery work. So we just throw the water on, literally just dump it on the floor, and just use a squeegee. make sure it's well distributed. After the water has been distributed, just take the floor scrubber and a little spot. elbow grease and scrub the more difficult or dirty spots. Don't forget the wet floor side. We're through scrubbing, whatever needs scrubbing. The only thing we have to do right now so we uh, do our final mop is just squeegee the excess water, take it as far up as front as you can. Okay, 
At this point, don't worry about getting the water too close to the grease trap because we're going to produce plenty more. Because at this point, the only thing we're going to do is repeat that same process over the entire rest of the floor in the main kitchen area. So we're going to go between where the prep tables are, on either side. We're going to move to the front, hit the hallway toward the bathroom, the area in front of the walk-in, and finally the area around the kitchen sink. Once you finish screeching any area of the kitchen, make sure that the wet floor sign is in place and that you position the floor fan in an appropriate place to be able to dry whatever you just finished and all you have to do is just plug it in somewhere close and let it do its work while you go on to your next phase. At the end, when you've accumulated a lot of water underneath the three compartment sink, just place the floor fan in such a way that it blows it toward the grease trap and that'll take care of it. Okay, the final thing we're going to do before we wrap this up is to just do a mop over the entire floor and get what's left over in a very few things. So this is where we take our nice new mop head, because we have a nice clean floor and this thing's probably all dirty and greasy. We'll put this away in the hamper where the dirty towels go. When you're all finished, trash cans with clean liners get put back where you found them along with waste baskets and anything else that you moved out of the way.